why do we still have cars? In 2010, the number of transport injuries was listed at nearly 1.4 million. This was more than all the deaths caused by self-harm or interpersonal violence, more than deaths caused by tuber tuberculosis or malaria, most sorts of cancer, neurological disorders, and more than all the deaths caused by falls, drowning, fire, animal contact and adverse effects of medical treatment put together. Road traffic crashes are listed as the ninth leading cause of death and it's said that between 20 and 50 million per year are injured or disabled because of these as well. So why do we still have cars? In 2015, the avoidable cost of congestion in Australia was estimated at around $16.5 billion. The average trip in Australia is approximated to take 27.5% longer because of congestion. Sydney, Brisbane, Perth and Adelaide are the worst, with Melbourne not far behind. Apparently every city larger than these in America is doing better with congestion. About four days in a year are just stuck in traffic. Why do we still have cars? These statistics alone should make us stop in our tracks. And I haven't even touched on things like the pollution that they cause, the damage that oil mining is doing, the amount of fuel and resources being used up, or the inordinate amount of money that goes into this one thing that so often doesn't perform as well as we think it should. But why do we still have cars? As we go through history, we see the evolution of technology. Some things perhaps have stayed fairly similar. A bowl is always a bowl, for example, but for cooking food, for instance, we've gone from open fires to wood stoves to gas stoves and microwave ovens to electric and induction cooktops. And with transport, we, we start to see a similar thing. We you know we went from walking to riding animals to building carts and chariots and wagons and eventually to motor vehicles. But since then, we've just been continually working on that, that one idea, trying and trying to make that one thing better rather than moving on to a new idea, which just doesn't make sense. Part of the problem though is how much money and energy has gone into and continues to go into the production, maintenance and infrastructure needed for cars. It consumes so much, which means that to do anything else it would seem like we were giving up a lot. I am somewhat encouraged though by the idea of the self-driving car, because I think that that may lead to further innovation that would push us in the right direction. That will at least reduce both congestion and crashes, which is a big plus. And we're seeing more and more cars using electric or alternate fuels, which is great as well. For myself, I think that the future lies in a completely public system, with no privately owned vehicles, everything autonomous and electric. And I actually think that the idea of the monorail has a lot more promise than that of the car. Though, of course, this raises problems for things like you know, four-wheel driving, but so does autonomous driving in general. In any case, it's good to see us taking some steps in the right direction, but I think there's still a long way to go. But what do you think? What do you see as the future of transportation? Yeah.